up? It's me, Attorney Hayes, and thank you so much for joining us today for another edition of Attorney H Legal Diaries. Yeah, so sobrang fun. Yeah, this is my favorite merienda ever. Mmm, mmm, so good. Oh my gosh, I'm hungry. Mmm. So we're gonna talk about annulments. Um, this subject is really close to my heart because. I actually handled nullities and annulment proceedings for a good siguro mga 40% of my private practice in the last 10 years. So talagang alam na alam natin yung proseso ng annulment both as a complainant or a petitioner and on the other side as a respondent. So we're really well versed in matters of annulments and nullities of marriages but we will focus on annulments or nullities of marriage under article 36. We'll focus basically on article 36 of the family code or psychological incapacity yan ang tinatawag na annulment usually in in regular common parlance yan ang annulment uh, based on psychological incapacity so this is the definition or as it's described it's really easy to get married so if you arrive you know you and your uh, partner arrive at a decision to get married sobrang dali just need to follow certain um, documentary requirements ng local civil registry where you intend to get married and then voila madaling ikasal pero mahirap merong asawa or kasal especially if hindi kayo magkasundo Marriage is really a decision to love each other, support each other. It's really difficult if you're in a situation where none of the essential obligations of marriage or just a few of the obligations of marriage are being fulfilled by the other spouse. So more often than not, the parties really resort to annulments or nullities of marriages. Actually, so experience go handling annulment cases for both petitioners and respondents, madugusha. Sobrang heavy. It's not just heavy for me as the lawyer, of course, who needs to absorb and understand the point of view of my client, but also, of course, to the parties involved, especially the children. We really need to understand ano ba talaga ang impact or ano yung social cost or ano yung cost of annulments and the reality or, or how it really is to file annulment cases. Sometimes you might see ads online that say that you can get nullities or annulments for less than six months. You just have to pay a certain fee or merong instant non-appearance. So it's absolutely not true. If you want your proceeding to be absolutely legal and legitimate, please lapit kayo sa isang abogado na license to do that. These proceedings are costly. These proceedings are highly technical and very, very, very difficult. Kaya minsan, may isip nyo, ha, ang mahal naman, ang mahal naman ng ano, ng abogado, ang mahal, mahal po talaga. Kasi napakahirap ng annulment. Sobrang hirap niya. Kaya yung mga price range niya, na, nag-range siya or nagsustart siya from about 250,000 pesos pataas. Some places, even 300 or 500, depende sa experience ng lawyer and depende sa, sa lugar. But, it, it can get really expensive. Apart from being expensive, like I mentioned, it's really difficult. Bakit difficult? It's intense in documentation and you involve a psychologist, an expert witness, to analyze the condition or mental condition of your spouse. Pag nag-file ka ng petition for annulment or nullity of marriage on the basis of Article 36 or psychological incapacity, ina-allege mo doon na merong mental psychosis or merong disorder ang iyong spouse. Therefore, dapat ma-prove yun technically. And the Supreme Court has been very, very, very strict about the requirements on how to prove psychological incapacity. And that includes having an expert as a witness to testify. Super hirap i-prove ng psychological incapacity. It's highly technical. And the Supreme Court has always said na dapat Yung disorder niya is really serious, it's grave, it's incurable, and meron juridical antecedents. Ang ibig lang sabihin nun, um, yung root cause niya 
hindi lang clinically and medically defined yung root cause but makikita siya noon pa previously prior pa to the marriage meron ng psychosis. So it's really hard kasi of course these are medical terms and so you need medical experts to testify on your behalf. Ang effect nito is sobrang rigid ng rules sa Supreme Court and the requirements to establish uh, the psychological incapacity of a partner. Minsan, kahit na, you know, talagang hindi lang sila nagkasundo, mapipilitan kang magtag ng psychosis uh, na really grave dun sa ex-partner mo. And presentation of witnesses can really get very, very traumatic. So, every little thing kailangan, makakahon siya dapat, and ipepresent mo siya in such a way na talagang grave and incurable yung uh, psychological disorder niya, which prevented him from carrying out his or her obligations or essential marital obligations to you. That's why it's super exciting that the Supreme Court actually issued a decision in 2021. It's called Rosanna Tan Andal versus Mario Andal. Nag-issue ang Supreme Court through Justice Leonen. I'm super happy ako na the Supreme Court issued a Supreme Court decision on the nullity of marriages based on Article 36 on psychological incapacity, overthrowing or pinalitan na nila yung rigid, yung super rigid, restrictive and intrusive na decisions nila before on psychological incapacity. Sa Supreme Court natin ngayon, uh, violative siya ng right to liberty, autonomy, and human dignity. And we'll explain why. So ito yung kwento. So, may mag-asawa, si Rosanna at saka si Mario. Nagpakasal sila in 1995. Uh, nagkaroon sila ng isang anak. Um, eventually, naghiwalay sila after four years of marriage. Um, Nag-file ng annulment si Miss Rosanna or yung petitioner. Nag-file siya ng um, petition for declaration of nullity of marriage claiming na si Mario, yung asawa niya, ay psychologically incapacitated uh, to fulfill his marital obligations to her under Article 36. Sinabi niya na mayroong drug problems si Mario na emotionally immature siya, in and out din siya sa rehab, all those other things basically. So nagpresent siya ng doctor in the form of Dr. Garcia, somebody in the medical field, an expert talaga, doctor talaga. She had diagnosed Mario with narcissistic antisocial personality disorder uh, and substance abuse disorder with psychotic features and Hindi niya in-interview si Mario basically. Ang assessments ni Dr. Garcia was based on the interviews with the petitioner herself and interviews with those who knew Mario from before. Hindi niya in-interview si Mario mismo. Admitted naman yun na lahat ng information niya gathered niya from Rosanna, their child, and the sister of Rosanna. Lumaban si Mario, sabi niya, no, the marriage should subsist. Hindi ako psychological incapacitated. Hindi totoo lahat na sinasabi ni Rosanna. Kaya final tong case na to kasi nanalo yung petition for nullity of marriage ni Rosanna. Nag-appeal si Mario sa Court of Appeals, valid and subsisting ang marriage. So what happened was, syempre hindi happy or aggrieved si Rosanna sa decision ng Court of Appeals, ni raise niya sa Supreme Court. Before this case, um, the application of the law was very rigid. Eventually, through the years, and dami na lang nag, you know, kahit nahihirapan sila sa marriage, um, nagpapanggap na lang or talagang ina-exaggerate nila yung mga um, psychological findings dun sa partners nila kasi nga sobrang strict ng rules when it came to proving psychological incapacity. So, sabi ng Supreme Court dito sa um, Tan Andal versus Andal na case decided in 2021 na yeah, we must protect the family because it is an inviolable social institution. Yes, that's correct. Pero dapat, the court should not hesitate to void yung mga patently ill-equipped marriages. Especially when it's inherent in the spouses. Kasi kung i-uphold mo lang daw, marriage for the sake of permanence and just for the sake of permanence alone, that is wrong and it's actually damaging to the sanctity of the institution of marriages that we seek to protect. Ang family should be protected whatever structure man yan. Yun ang sinabi, yun ang pinakagusto ko sinabi ng Supreme Court dito. Kahit anong structure ng family, family yan. And a family can be founded whether or not the parents choose to marry. So, sabi ng Supreme Court, hey, it's still a family even if it, the partners are not married. Or if they chose to marry, it's protected. Or if eventually they choose to disassociate or maghiwalay. And any of these arrangements 
should be protected by the Constitution. Ang ganda rin ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dito na when they said na the right to choose our intimate partners is actually part of our autonomy and liberty. And it's an inherent part of human dignity. I love it. I really love it. And it's really true. The Supreme Court issued this decision. Yun nga, there's really no need for having or labeling a person as having a mental disorder just to obtain a decree of nullity. So people would not be shamed or go through so much indignity just to, you know, establish psychological incapacity. So ngayon, sinabi ng Supreme Court, hindi na kailangan ng expert witnesses. Ang kailangan mo lang, regular, ordinary witnesses that would testify on the behaviors. Basta pasok dun sa meaning naman ng psychological incapacity. But not medical na yung requirement. So really, it's legal and regular in the course of regular terms. So, our um, psychological incapacity is no longer considered here as an, you know, an illness in a medical sense, but it can just be legally proven. It need not be incurable, kasi dati kailangan incurable, grave yung disease, ganyan ganyan. But now it need not be a medical psychosis, so it doesn't have to be incurable. So really, yung context ng entire case and ng parties involved, ang kailangang talagang usisain and i-analyze. Or who are we? to, you know, keep saying na inviolable ang social institutions, inviolable ang families, ang social construct, kailangan hindi natin paghiwalayin at dapat strict ang terms ng, ng paghihiwalay. Kung talagang hindi na sila okay, hayaan na natin sila. Eh, ang lalong masasira dyan, hindi lang yung dalawang mag-asawa, but the people around them, especially the children. The institution that we seek to protect here, is really not protected with the rigid application of the rules. This will really, you know, help the courts not only declog the court cases or the dockets and the cases pending, but also you're doing parties justice or you're doing society justice by um, making the parting less bitter. You minimize animosity kasi reality na yan na hindi talaga lahat ng parties or married couples nagkakasundo. Hindi na talaga healthy for anyone. So this is a time it was encouraged, um, the courts were encouraged, the RTCs were encouraged to have a liberal application or take on nullity proceedings. It's really a welcome development and I super thank Justice Leonin and the rest of the Supreme Court who signed this decision. Sobrang forward thinking siya. We're on the right path. Wala tayong divorce at, at the moment. So walang batas na nagsasabi na hey, pwede na yung divorce. But at least with this, talagang merong way out. Practical and, and true and correct to its roots yung application ng batas. So ayun, I hope you learned something from me today on nullities of marriages. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to my channel. This is me, Attorney H, signing off.